So you wanna live in Boca Raton, you don't want HOA, and you want something more affordable relative to the area. You don't know which neighborhood to look at, and you're really having a hard time deciding. Maybe you've done research or watched my last video and realized that the prices in Boca Raton are high and you want to find more affordable communities without sacrificing the amazing location that's close to the beach and action downtown. We're going to be reviewing the top eight somewhat more affordable neighborhoods and areas in East Boca Raton without HOA. This means no monthly fees and more freedom. Quick disclaimer, affordability means something different for everybody and Boca Raton is considered the Beverly Hills of Florida, so even finding a $400,000, $600,000 and yes, $700,000 home here could be considered an amazing opportunity and a deal in comparison to other neighborhoods in East Boca with heavy price tags well into the millions. If you need a single family home below $400,000, it's going to be challenging to find one in East Boca Raton specifically, but there are other surrounding cities we can discuss in future videos that could fit the bill. The neighborhood here that I'll be talking about in today's video are in lesser known open neighborhoods that realtors don't really talk about and many people don't know about. These are hidden gem opportunities for fixer uppers or just older homes with charm if that's what you want. Communities that are slowly being revitalized and eventually could look much different over the next decade. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. If you wanna know what it's like to live in South Florida in cities like Boca Raton, then make sure you consider subscribing below and tap that bell for notifications so you can be the first to know when I post new content about living here. Go ahead and hit the like button too if you find this video helpful. Maybe even share it with someone who may be looking for a home in Boca. My name is Jonathan, my team and I, we get calls, texts, emails, and messages on social media from people just like you every single day that are looking to make the move to and around South Florida. You know, we really love being able to help so whether you're looking to make a move next week next month or even next year give us a call or send us a text all in the description below happy to help you make your smoothest move yet if you haven't figured it out yet most agents in south florida boca especially only talk about luxury neighborhoods and condos but on my channel we try to cover it all including these lesser known areas where everyday people and families buy homes there are incredible neighborhoods with no hoa that are popular in boca raton like old floresta and boca villas and palm beach farms if you've seen this video on my channel then you know that these homes and these neighborhoods can go well into the millions which may not be realistic for some people. I want you to know that you still have affordable home options available here in East Boca Raton in top rated school districts close to the action, close to the beach, close to I-95 which makes it easy for those that need to commute for work close to Meisner Park and downtown Boca minutes from the beach so let's uncover those areas together and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to identify if any of these communities are a great fit. Number one, Boca Square. First on our list is Boca Square. Boca Square is located directly east of I-95 and south of Palmetto Park Road. Boca Square is the epitome of what most buyers are looking for in a single family home neighborhood and it has no HOA fees or heavy restrictions. The neighborhood was built out in the 1960s and 70s and many of the homes here are ranch style but vary in home design offering one and two story homes, swimming pools, two car garages, fences, circular driveways and so on. Another thing that I wanna mention is that there are homes at different price points depending on the style and renovations. Homes that need more TLC and renovations are definitely more affordable than more modern remodeled homes with luxury finishes. You can expect prices here to range from 500,000 to over a million dollars. That doesn't mean that more affordable homes won't pop up depending on market conditions, but this is the range that I'm currently seeing in my MLS, which is the database realtors use to search for homes. Homes here typically sit on a quarter acre of land, smaller homes, Homes can have two to three bedrooms and larger ones normally go up to about five bedrooms and some have sold with over 3,000 square feet but again it varies based on the home. One of the big reasons people request us to search in Boca Square is the incredible school district. The subdivision is zoned for a prestigious public elementary school called Addison Meisner Elementary which ranks in the top 10 of all elementary schools in the state of Florida. Now this is a big deal to some parents. The community is also located right by the popular Sugar Sand Park which is a favorite spot amongst residents that want to visit the children's explore host a birthday party, play organized sports, and so much more. Over 90% of 
residents in this neighborhood are homeowners so you can find a good sense of community if you choose to live here. People that live here come from all walks of life and age groups. However, the typical homeowners are working professionals in their early to mid 40s. The community is home to plenty of business owners, stay at home parents and retirees. However, compared to other open neighborhoods in the area close to the university, you wouldn't really find much student housing here or as many rental homes as you would in other communities. Boca Square is an excellent choice and there's listings popping up every day, so keep an eye out. Up next on our list is one of Boca's historic neighborhoods, Spanish Village. Number two, Spanish Village. The neighborhood of Spanish Village is located between Glades Road and Palmetto Park Road right off of Northwest 2nd Avenue. The neighborhood contains around 170 homes that vary in size and style. The prices here start around $450,000 for smaller homes that need major renovation to over a million dollars for large, modernized, yet charming residents with generous square footage of over 3,500 square feet. Most properties that I've seen listed here in Spanish Village carry price tags from $500,000 to $900,000 and are about, let's say, $1,500 to 2,400 square feet. For all you history lovers, I wanna quickly review some of the notable and interesting past of this community that makes it so special. Like the famous neighborhood of Old Floresta, Spanish Village was established in 1927 by the well-known architect Addison Meisner, father of the Palm Beach style. It's said that Meisner developed 20 bungalow style two bedroom homes in the community that sold for $7,000 at that time. The area was known as the Spanish Village because of the Mediterranean revival and Spanish style architecture that dominated homes in the area area at that time. This specific style featured unique details such as clay tile roofs, balconies, and arch windows that gave these homes charm compared to what some call cookie cutter homes that you see in plan developments. Anyway, back to Meisner. Unfortunately, he went bankrupt due to a major hurricane that devastated the area in the late 1920s, bringing the Great Depression early to South Florida and unfortunately was only able to develop 20 bungalows and ended up abandoning the project completely. Let's skip ahead to the 1940s where Spanish Village was used by the U.S. Army Airfield for temporary military housing. The area was known as University Village at that time and included included single family homes, duplexes, and barracks for the airmen. The barracks were constructed out of wood and canvas, and many of the homes were used for administrative offices, mess halls, and classrooms. The homes that were not used for the airfield were rented out to the families of the men that were stationed at the base. By the 1950s, when the neighborhood was no longer occupied by the military, the population of Spanish Village, which included a mix of professionals and families from diverse backgrounds, including those of Cuban, Spanish, and Jewish heritage, and today, it's still a melting pot, which even adds more to its character, in my opinion. Over the years, Spanish Village has continued to develop with many of the original homes being renovated or replaced. It really is a great place to live if you're looking for a charming historic community in South Florida that's a bit more affordable. If schools are important to you, don't worry. Spanish Village is zoned for Boca Raton Elementary, Boca Raton Community Middle, and Boca Raton Community High School, which are all top rated schools. Okay, let's move on to number three on our list, which is a large section of open neighborhoods that I grew together since they're so similar in terms of real estate stats and location. Villa Rica, Chatham Hills, Winfield Park, and Boca Woods. My team and I, we call it the Corridor, but that's just an unofficial nickname we coined having worked in a real estate office across the street from that neighborhood. Number three, Villa Rica, Chatham Hills, Winfield Park, and Boca Woods, what we call the Corridor. In this particular area, Villa Rica is the largest of the subdivisions with 458 homes, followed by Chatham Hills with 301 homes, Winfield Park with 284 homes, and finally, Boca Woods with 260 homes. So it's a sizable area of old Florida style homes. Let's get into the details. Now, Villa Rica is situated between Federal Highway, also known as US-1, and Dixie Highway on the north and south side of Spanish River Boulevard, and was first established in 1925 by George Harvey, who was considered one of Addison Meisner's major competitors way back then. All right, quick history lesson. The community's early footprint actually began north of Northeast 32nd Street with 12 two-story homes, a tea room, and a real estate office. Unfortunately, the hurricane in 1926 that I talked about earlier destroyed Harvey's original development in all of the early homes in Villa Rica. Now, due to multiple factors, including the railroads imposing embargoes on goods, lack of labor, lack of cash flow, and then the major hurricane, of course, the land boom ended up putting the brakes on many, if not all, real estate projects in the area. According to the historical archives, the Villa Rica area basically sat empty, overgrown with weeds until the next land boom in the 1950s. So today, you'll find that the majority of the homes in Villa Rica, Chatham Hills, Winfield Park, Boca Woods were built between 1950s and 1980s for those reasons. Here's some cool vintage photos that I found from the Boca Historical Society of what the area looked like way back then when 
when development first started. Now, if you love history like me and want to learn more about early developments in Boca like this one, definitely visit the Boca Historical Society's website. I put the link in the description below. It's a wealth of information, and if you're local or in the area visiting, you can also visit the Schmidt Boca Raton History Museum in person, which I definitely recommend. Okay, so back to Villa Rica, but in modern times, I wanted to talk about this neighborhood and area because it's a great opportunity for those that want to live a mile from the beach at a fraction of the cost. Again, like all of the neighborhoods that we're discussing, the homes here vary in style and price depending on current renovations. For the most part, you'll see mid-century modern ranch style homes that Florida is famous for. Yes, there will still be homes here with pink bathtubs and floral valances that need a facelift, but these types of properties tend to be priced much lower than fully renovated homes. In Villa Rica, you can expect a typical three bedroom single family home, but I'd also like to mention that there are multifamily duplexes along the outskirts of the community. This offers opportunity to potential investors or families that want multi-generational housing options, which aren't as common here as other parts of the United States. In terms of price, I'm seeing homes for sale from 400,000 for smaller properties that need TLC to over 750,000 for larger modernized residences. Home size could range anywhere from 1,200 square feet to over 2,600 square feet. But if you do see anything available in here for under that $400,000 mark, know that it's gonna be a smaller home that needs a substantial amount of work, which again, could be a great news and a good opportunity to buy in a highly desired location that will continue to be redeveloped in the years to come. Renovated homes in Villa Rica could feature metal roofs, impact windows, updated fireplaces, saltwater swimming pools with sun decks or outdoor kitchens, beautifully landscaped backyards with pergolas or tiki hut style bars, high quality interior features such as hardwood flooring and updated kitchens with quartz or modernized granite and high end appliances. Again, there's gonna be plenty of older homes that could feature one car garages or carports along with features like Mexican tile, terrazzo, carpets and red brick fireplaces, wood paneled walls or even mirrored walls that were popular well over 30 years ago. Some people appreciate the character these dated features add and others see it as an opportunity to renovate how they see fit. Many of our clients that buy older homes in this community with the idea of remodeling typically find that they may need to replace items such as the roof, the AC or electrical panels. The more expensive homes that have been remodeled could also offer impact windows, home generators, entire home purification systems and the list goes on and on and on. Let's talk about demographics. 60% of this area is owner occupied you're gonna find a good mix of people that live here and many that have been residents for decades. There are plenty of families here with kids, singles, retirees, long-term renters, and college students that all reside here. Since this neighborhood is fairly close to the universities like FAU, Lynn, and Palm Beach State, there are homes that have been purchased by investors and rented out to college students, which is also the case for some of the other communities that I'm gonna be talking about on this list. Not having an HOA here is a big selling point, so you'll see RV, campers, boats, and motorcycles. You can decorate for all of the holidays and paint your home to your liking, even change your mailbox to something funky like a manatee or a dolphin, which we see all over here. Another huge selling point, which is a common trend for all of the neighborhoods that I feature in this video is the location. You're literally minutes away from the beach at Spanish River Park, Lake Rogers, Bark Park, Dog Beach, Publix, which is right on Spanish River, and there's also one at the Fifth Avenue shops. You get all kinds of retail and dining options, coffee shops like Carmela's Coffee, one of my favorites, Starbucks, Brooklyn Water Bagels for all you Northerners, the popular Santo Sushi Buffet, small restaurants and delis such as the classic VNS Deli Subs, Mississippi be sweets, French cafes, and a variety of quick service options in the nearby Fifth Avenue shops. All of these subdivisions are zoned in an A-rated school district, J.C. Mitchell Elementary, Boca Community Middle, and Boca Community High. Listen, if you're looking for a more affordable home where you can add your own character to an already excellent location, I would say that this area is a great place to look. The area will only keep improving in terms of redevelopment. Number four, Boca Raton Hills and Caldwell Heights. Boca Raton Hills is located on the west side of Northwest 2nd Avenue on the north and south south side of Spanish River Boulevard and it contains 661 homes and Caldwell Heights is a smaller neighborhood subdivision close by with about 80 single family homes. Now these neighborhoods contain both one story and two story homes, some with unique features like guest cottages. Prices here are gonna range from around 500,000 to over a million, pretty similar to the other communities on this list. So I'll spare you all of the same details. As you can see, driving through the neighborhood, you have all types of homes in here, including ones that are still stuck in the 70s and are ready for improvement 
improvement, which means that there's a possibility of getting a better deal. The Caldwell Heights neighborhood is literally right next to JC Mitchell Elementary School, which is another A-rated school here in Boca. It's also close to one of the area's known private schools, Grandview Prep. Another quick dive into Boca Raton history. JC Mitchell Elementary was actually named in honor of one of Boca's most well-liked and pioneering residents, JC Mitchell. He settled in Boca Raton in 1923 with his wife Floyd and owned a successful real estate company. He eventually served as the mayor of Boca in the 1950s and owned the Mitchell Arcade Building, which was located right on the corner of Palmetto Park Road and Dixie Highway, known for a large banyan tree out front. Unfortunately, decades later, the city decided to remove the tree and sadly, the original building was burnt down. When Mitchell died in 1955, as a tribute, the city named J.C. Mitchell Elementary after him and opened its doors in 1958. I actually attended this school when my parents first moved here from New Jersey, so driving through this area always brings me back memories. Okay, so let's talk about the fifth area. Number five, Bible Conference area. Now, I couldn't leave Bible Conference Estates and the Conference Lakes area off of this list for good reason. It's another excellent open neighborhood with early history in one of the best locations. The Bible Conference area is located just east of the historic community of Old Foresta. Homes here can range from 600,000 to well over a million dollars. And as you can see, it's a beautiful neighborhood that's well taken care of by its residents. I wanted to add this area to this list because although it's more pricey, there are older homes in here that could pop up with an affordable price tag. And if so, this would be a great location that you would want to jump on immediately in my personal opinion. At one end of the Bible Conference is a three acre park called Palmetto Dunes Park. There's walking trails. It's great for fishing and just spending leisurely time with family or friends. You're also close to Fig Park, the library, the Boca Raton Regional Hospital, the Children's Museum, and of course, downtown Boca. Add this area to your list because homes don't pop up here too often, and when they do, if they're priced right, they definitely won't stay on the market long. Okay, so let's get into some of the history here. In the early stages of Boca's development, there weren't too many housing options, but when the 1950s came along, developers started building large concrete block homes in an effort to provide more affordable homes for young families and people relocating to the area from the north. Bible Conference Estates was originally established in 1950 as a grounds for religious winter retreat for senior citizens and was located on 320 acres of land on the former Boca Raton Army Airfield, also known as Bible Town. During the 1954 season, more than 2,000 people attended the Bible Conference in the neighborhood. After the 1954 season, the church changed its worship style, its pastors, and its philosophy, and the retreat was no longer a winter Bible retreat for seniors. And today, it's one of the best open neighborhoods for people of all ages and backgrounds. Let's keep it moving to number six, the University Heights area. And of course, the name is a giveaway because it's right around the corner from the FAU campus. Number six, University Heights, University Gardens area. The University Heights area is located south of Yamato and west of North Boca Raton Boulevard. Home prices range from 400,000 to around 750,000 more or less, depending on home sizes and features. As you can see, homes in this area match the same look and feel of other neighborhoods on this list and can feature carports, barrel tile roofs, metal roofs, brick facades, swimming pools, and so on. They're all different and no home is exactly the same. This neighborhood and the surrounding subdivisions were also first developed in the 1950s when homes were smaller, so you'll still find smaller two-bedroom homes with less square footage in this neighborhood as well as larger homes with four bedrooms. Here's a vintage ad that I found online from when the neighborhood was first developed so you could see that there are are still homes in University Heights that look just like this. The average age of this community is in their late 30s and early 40s, but you get a bit of everything here, including college students and longtime owners and retirees. Again, you're biking distance from the beach in areas with retail and plenty of dining venues like Boca Bagel Bar, The Griddle, Positano, Pavilion Grill, The Melting Pot, and typical places like Panera Bread and Dunkin' Donuts. The zone for A-rated schools, JC Mitchell that we discussed earlier, Boca Community Middle, and Boca Community High. Okay, so we have two more areas to go on our list, so let's keep it moving. The next neighborhood we have at number seven is Country Club Village. Number seven, Country Club Village. Country Club Village is located right off of Glades Road and it's just east of I-95. You make that first right turn right before University Commons and then you just head south on Northwest 15th Avenue and before you know it, you're in Country Club Village. A little bit about the community. The community has 478 homes all made of concrete block stucco construction that were built in the 1950s through the 70s and even in the 2000s. Prices in this community 
Mini range from 400,000 to a little over 900,000 depending on size and home features. As you can see, this neighborhood has that typical old Florida style that we continue to explore in this video. There's no HOA, so you can pretty much do what you want with your home. The location is just north of the Palmetto Park Square shopping plaza that has a Publix, Kiki's Breakfast Cafe, an awesome little place for poke bowls and boba tea that I love called Sovereign. All of the schools, Addison Meisner, Boca Community Middle, and Boca Community High are extremely close, as well as the universities and plazas with stores like Whole Foods, you have Barnes and Nobles, Nordstrom Racks, Jamba Juice, and more. This video definitely wouldn't be complete without Country Club Village, and I see listings pop up in here fairly often, so it's a wonderful option for those relocating to South Florida or people that live here that are moving from a different city or community. Finally, we are at our last neighborhood on our list, Boca Raton Heights. Number eight. Boca Raton Heights. The Boca Raton Heights is located between Palmetto Park Road and Camino Real east of I-95 and west of Dixie Highway. If you take Boca Raton Heights and add Montez Gardens and Beulah Heights, the area totals 207 homes. The prices range from 400,000 to over 900,000. And of course, there are neighborhoods within close proximity that go well into the millions, especially those waterfront areas. Listings in this neighborhood don't come up often and homeowners have lived here for quite some time. The average age of this community is 55 years old but of course it's all ages and there are some younger families with kids as well as singles here it is an open community with no hoa with all different types of home styles and an excellent location where you can bike or walk to meisner park you're just two miles away from the beach palmetto dunes park that we discussed earlier is also nearby which is a plus you know this really is a solid choice if you do see homes that pop up here and like all those other neighborhoods you're zoned for top schools like boca elementary Boca Community Middle and Boca Community High. All right, I think I covered as much as I could about the top eight affordable neighborhoods in East Boca Raton. Of course, there's other smaller subdivisions, but this video summed up the general areas where people buy homes that don't have an HOA. Be on the lookout because if it's Boca that you're interested in, I'm gonna be making videos in the near future about the best waterfront communities, neighborhoods in Central and West Boca, neighborhood driving tours in 4K, where I take you along with me and we drive together. Real quick, the areas that I talked about in this video are with Within Boca City limits, which gives you free access to the dog park, discounted permit pricing for all of the beaches, and to be able to use the pavilions. But other parts of Boca are considered unincorporated and are serviced by the county, which don't reap the same benefits like most of West Boca, but we'll cover all of that in another video. If you have anything to add or have any questions, drop me a comment. Which one stood out? What area should I record next? Don't forget to subscribe, and if you want more non-HOA homes in Boca Raton, then make sure you go watch this video.